Welcome to the new Space Shuttle Vessel mod for Orbiter 2016. Today we'll launch Shuttle Discovery into its initial orbit. The scenarios place us on the pad at LC-39A, T-9 minutes from liftoff. The ground launch sequencer has started, let's run the checklists. On the flight deck, we switch into the pilot seat with control and right arrow, and look down at panel R2 to begin the APU start procedure. We'll start by putting the hydraulic main pump pressure into the low position. We'll now switch on the APU controller power and open the APU fuel tank valves. We'll see that the APU indicators now signify ready to start. We set the APU operate switches to start slash run. The hydraulic pressure indicators on the MFT will be low and green, and ready to start will show barber pole. We'll now flick the hydraulic main pump pressure switches to normal, and on the MFT, hydraulic pressure will be shown as high and three green. Believe it or not, that is the conclusion of the checklist after T minus nine minutes. At T zero, the engines fire up and the orbiter lifts off. As the SRVs burn out and separate, the vehicle begins to pitch over. On the flight deck, we can monitor our vehicle getting faster and faster and our altitude rapidly increasing. The vehicle then begins a roll program to point its belly towards the earth. This is in preparation for separating the external tank. We see some indications on the flight deck change as we reach orbit. The external tank will separate and of course the shuttle's main engines will cut off. We can also see that the orbital digital autopilot has activated. On the flight deck there are now a few things for us to take care of. We will set our attitude indications to inertial on both the commander and pilot sides. We'll also switch off the flight controller power again on both sides of the flight deck for the commander and the pilot. Returning to panel R2, we'll now switch off the boiler N2 supply as well as the boiler power and flick the APU operate switches to the off position. We'll now close the APU fuel tank valves and we can switch off the APU controller power. We'll now close the external tank umbilical doors. We set the sensor line latch to stow. We set both latches to the release position. We set both doors to the close position we then set both latches back to the latch position before returning all switches to the off position. With this procedure complete, we'll now turn our attention to the main engines where we'll switch off all six main engine power switches. We'll set the main propulsion system helium isolation valves, all six of them, to GPC. We also set pneumatic helium isolation to GPC. And that's it, the orbiter is now in its initial orbit. However, if we hit F8 from the cockpit view to activate the 2D panels and then select the orbit MFD, we hit PRJ and DST for a better look. What you'll notice is that although we are in a circular orbit, our periapsis is only around 80 kilometers or so. This means that every time we pass that periapsis, the atmosphere will drag us in a little bit closer until our orbit degrades and the vehicle re-enters. Our next video will cover the OMS-2 burn that's needed to raise our orbit. In the meantime, you can find instructions for that burn linked in the description below. To switch back to the shuttle MFDs, go to the select menu, click it twice and click CRT. This will reinstate the prototypical shuttle MFD, which of course you can manipulate as in the real vehicle. That concludes our launch and initial orbit tutorial. Take care and I'll see you next time.